Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and today we are going to do part three of our series of New York Times opinion piece breakdowns. Today's video is by Megan Kate Nelson, who is a historian who has a book that is coming out uh, relatively soon, and her article is called Today's Republicans Are Like Lincoln in Only One Way. Now, if you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so we are going to get right into it. This piece, today's Republicans, are like Lincoln in only one way. This would be part three of our series in New York Times opinion, breakdown, videos, things. Um, usual disclaimer, I do not know Dr. Nelson. Uh, this is not personal at all. It's just um, my reaction to your opinion. So let's jump right in. What is the way that today's Republicans are like Lincoln in only one way? They share a determined to a determination to undermine the land rights of native peoples. And here we go. We have a presumably what would be a homesteader. Uh, Eighteen six. Uh, no, that's not from when the picture is. Anyway, last year. The House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, defended a series of President Trump's racist tweets. We are the party of Lincoln, he said. This party believes in the content of the individual. So, so right off the bat, right off the bat, I get it, Dr. Nelson, if you happen to see this somehow. I get it that this is not this is not a historical critique. This is an opinion piece. Uh, I get it. But you're you're just you're poisoning the well right off the bat, right right off the bat you poison them. Saying here's how I'm framing this whole article, everything in here. Here's how I'm framing it. I understand. This is what that's what I do here. I just I give my opinion. That's it. But I uh, I do my best to be fair. And this first paragraph uh, immediately is not fair. It's just already. And not only that. Not only that. You. If you're saying that President Trump's tweets right now are racist, but they're not similar to Lincoln. So Lincoln wasn't racist. I don't think it was. But that kind of contradicts what the New York Times told me the 1619 Project is about. I thought Lincoln was. And he, whatever. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um... This party believes in the content of the individual. So we're, we're going to go through this whole article. I'm go, I will go through it, at least the reading, quickly. Um, I usually don't go through, I usually like to skip around. So that way, you know, it's more about commentary than me reading. But anyway, this reframe, reframe, refrain is deeply misleading. Republicans in the 1850s and 1860s created a coalition dedicated to preventing the expansion of slavery and using federal power to promote public welfare. Historians know that Lincoln would not recognize his party or its values today. Okay, well, that seems like a good... <laughs> uh, preventing the expansion of slavery, that seems like pretty... I think we could all get on board with that one. I'm, I'm, I am 100% for that. <laughs> um... Let me make something. I, I'm I'm not a Republican. I do con tend to consider myself a more conservative person, but I I would not say that I'm a Republican. I, I do want to make that clear. But this is just nuts. <laughs> uh, using federal power to promote public welfare. Okay. Um, today's Republicans are Lincoln's heirs in only one significant way. They, like him, are determined. To undermine the land rights of native peoples. No. Um, all right. So the Republican platform in 1860 is asserted that the normal condition of all territory of the United States is that of freedom. All right. Um, yeah. Seems seems pretty good to me. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Maybe you disagree with that. That you you. It seems that's how you're setting it up. 
this is how it sounds to me is that oh look at it Ooh, we don't we don't like this freedom it also argued for industrial development uh oh watch out for that gotta watch out for those capitalists railroad line from omaha to sacramento and homesteads for white settlers uh, indigenous homelands across the West the Republicans believed rightfully belonged to white farmers as a uh, excuse me white American farmers um, ooh, as if being white wasn't bad enough you're also American uh, as president Lincoln's administration carried out this platform enacting policies of an indigenous conquest during the Civil War in the spring and summer of 1862 Afterward, reached Washington that a Confederate invasion of New Mexico had failed. Republicans passed a series of acts to ensure its white settlement. You can see that I'm uncomfortable saying things like this. Because there's no... It's just blatantly... Whatever. It, it's just... This is not what this video is about. But it, it's just blatant bias. And that's why I'm so uncomfortable saying this because it's just it's just biased the homestead act provided 160 acres of public land for every loyal citizen of the union the pacific railway act approved federal support for okay okay uh agricultural causes okay we're rooted in republican beliefs about the centrality of labor of labor farming in the future of the west and of the nation uh, before the West could be settled with white farmers, however, the federal government had to remove <laughs> a native obstacle. Okay, here's here's what I'm going to say about the native peoples. They were nomads, the, particularly in the in particularly in the West. Eventually, there were native tribes in the East that settled down, formed, and took up agriculture. But in the West, they were nomads. Nobody's farming there. <laughs> no, and, and look, I don't mean to oversimplify. There's a lot of complexity. And, and certainly there was a lot, of, a lot of injustice that was done to the Native American tribes. I don't want to downplay that. But it's also like there's free. <laughs> it's endless expanses of land that you would just have be left un, unutilized. Just for why? Why? So if the Lincoln developed a two-pronged approach. Oh, this is the Pacific Railway Act stipulated that where the government had already negotiated treaties granting lands to native groups, it would extinguish those titles. Um, where there was no treaty in place, the Union War Department would declare war on native communities and force their surrender. Then they would be removed to reservations where they could be monitored by Union t troops until taught, quote, the arts of a civilization, unquote, and converted to Christianity. In the New Mexico Territory, okay, she kind of goes, uh, she goes a bit into the, okay, Charlton. <laughs> this sounds like a conspiracy theory. I know you guys love, okay, so here's, here's the government's plan. In the middle, the height, actually, in the height of the Civil War, we have the resources to spare on such ridiculousness. Like, let's take a look at Charlton intensified these campaigns in the next year because in the summer of 1863, Vicksburg campaign, Gettysburg campaign, both in the summer of 1863, for those of you who know your Civil War history, gold had been discovered in the mountains of, of central Arizona territory. Once the Union Army, again, wasn't busy at all during 1863 once the union army removed apaches and navajos from their lands the plan went the miners would lay claim to the arizona diggers farmers would follow planting the fields that would feed them the plan okay the immense mineral resources of these territories ought to be developed as rapidly as possible the president wrote in his annual address to congress in 1862 again for those of you who saw my first video this is what we should do. The president wrote his annual address to Congress. I'm sick and tired of the State of the Union. Sidebar. It is worthy of your serious consideration whether some extraordinary measures to promote 
that end cannot be adopted. There is no there is no context for this quote. None. What is an extraordinary measure? Building a railroad from one coast of North America to the other? I would say that's an extraordinary measure. Up, forcibly uprooting, what were the two? Um, the Apaches and the Navajos? Uh, who knows what Lincoln is talking about? There's no context to this. Extraordinary measure is entirely subjective. It'll be all right. I got to calm down a little bit. <laughs> all right. Um, we're almost done. I promise. Uh, okay. He, they started a reservation. They called the land of suffering. I, I'm sure that's true. And I'm sure it was a land of suffering. As I said, I'm not going to blather that point. But this is so one sided. So it, the, there is no nuance for someone who calls himself a historian. There's no consideration of any kind of nuance. And, and this is the most amazing thing. The whole time, you're ragging on Lincoln and how terrible he is. All right, so maybe this would be the nuance. I think it's just inconsistency. I don't consider it to be whatever, detail-oriented. Uh, reports of these conditions sparked multiple congressional investigations. By 1864, Lincoln was calling for new policies that would provide for the welfare of the Indian, but at the same time, he advocated to render the western territories see this is why i don't consider it to be like okay like yeah look he's trying to provide for the welfare of the inner hand but he's also trying to advance the settler like again there's they're nomads and they don't need a lot of room i get it there but there's it's called the frontier for a reason there's a lot of open space this conviction um, continues to inform, I'm, okay, I'm done, uh, I'm, I'm done, now, she goes on, uh, she goes on, she talks about, uh, today's Republicans, and she, she compares what they did back then to, I, I, I have no way to validate these claims, or I do have, I don't have the energy to validate these claims, <laughs> um, here's what I, here's what I wanted to do, um, the act provided, okay, here we go. Republicans had passed a series of acts to ensure its white settlement. The Homestead Act provided 160 acres of public land for every loyal citizen of the Union. Two other acts, one said on colleges, another, okay. Um, but before the West could be settled, however, Federal government had to remove. Okay. So. I think this is being incredibly dishonest. I think this is being intellectually dishonest. I think it's intentionally misleading. Because the Homestead Act. She's painting this in a way. That these acts are uh, racially motivated. I do not believe that's the case. I read right here. I, I was going to recommend before I read this, I was going to say, I'm going to tell people to they should go and, and read this. It's boring. <laughs> it's boring. It, it There are interesting bits. There are interesting parts, but it's boring. It's a legal, it's legalese. Thankfully, it's 18, if this is from the 1860s, not the 1960s. So the act itself starts right here, approved on May 20th, 1862. Right here, this is an actual scan from the from the actual document, the primary source. And then, bam, there's the second page, only two pages, read them. Um, here's, the, here's the interesting bit that I wanted to read. And be it further enacted, that the person applying for the benefit of this act shall, upon application to the register of the land office in which he or she, very, very progressive, the... Republican Party was back in the 1860s. He or she is about to make such entry, make affidavit before the said register or receiver that he or she. So here it is. Here's the requirements. I want to make that clear because this is some old timey language. This is all you had to do to get land in the West at this time. He or she is the head of a family 
or is 21 years of age or shall have performed service in the Army or Navy of the United States and that he has never borne arms against the government of the United States or given aid and comfort to its enemies. Again, this is, you know, this is, I think Antietam was after this, but Ante same year as Antietam, again, for the Civil War buffs out there. Think this is the most destructive war in American history, so this is a sensible <laughs> provision. Um, has not given aid or comfort to its enemies, meaning the Confederacy. And either directly, okay, to its enemies, and that such application is made for his or her exclusive use and benefit, and that said entry is made for the purpose of actual settlement and cultivation. This is so that you don't have massive, giant corporations just buying up things under the Homestead Act, and that can then um, exploit them without actual people going out and settling. I'm sure it happened to some degree. There's always corruption in government. And not either directly or indirectly for the use or benefit of any other person or persons whomsoever though that's a, that's a good word uh, and upon filing the said affidavit with the register or receiver and on payment of ten dollars he or she shall thereupon be permitted to enter the quantity of land specified so there's there's nothing here about tribal status or race in any way there's nothing there nothing there's no requirement all you have to do is not be a traitor <laughs> be 21 and not have seceded from the union and and fair enough maybe you say poor people couldn't do it ten dollars probably a lot of money back then so there was there's your three things you had to be 21 you had to not be a traitor and you had to have ten dollars Get you 60 acres of land. But the, she's, the, it, the implication is that people went in and forced natives off the land. And to some extent, I believe that's true. But the vast majority was unsettled. The vast majority of the land in the, in the West was unsettled. So, and, and again, I don't know what you want. Like, like seriously, what would you have done, really? Um, not settled the West at all. You 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 draw your line at the Mississippi. Say no, we don't we don't go on the other side of this. Is that we? I'm gonna end on this. There's there's a debate in the historical community as to whether we should place more use modern moral judgments on people of past eras i would say i would say no i would say no because guess what it's 2020 this was 1860 um let's go what is that 160 years give or take um in 160 years in 2180 they're going to be looking back at you and seeing what you were saying with just as much hindsight. It's just something I would keep in mind. Um, sorry if I, I, I tend to get a little bit more animated about these history videos, but it, it's just it's just so dishonest. It's so incredibly dishonest. It's hard to believe. And I know I said I'd end it, but here's the last bit. This Her book... I don't understand the point of her book of, of this article if it because I this seems like a book I would like to read I love history I'm trying to learn more about the Civil War right now that's why I read the, the stinking stamp act <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get more into actual like primary source documents and read more books on it and and so it seems like something interesting like oh wow like there's there's actually activity in the west during the civil war seems seems very interesting but you you'd go ahead and, and write something like this why it just so it makes me feel like you're not going to give an honest account it, it really makes me feel i do i do not have confidence that your book would be an honest accounting i don't if you like what i do 
Please be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.